guys, it's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video and to another Goodreads Choice Award predictions. So I posted my mystery thriller predictions earlier this week and I wasn't initially going to do romance like I did last year because I thought maybe I'm, I'm not keeping up with romance as much as mystery thriller this year. I do think it can get a little bit repetitive. However, I had so much fun doing that one. I asked you guys if you wanted to see me do romance and a few of you said yes. So here I am giving the people what they want, the five people what they want. I'm very excited to go through romance. I've had a little think and I actually think this could be quite interesting. I've got a couple of ideas of ones that I just kind of think might be on here even if they aren't super super popular. Obviously with romance we do have kind of like very similar authors every year. You've got the people that you are guaranteed to see. However I do think it could be fun to do some predictions and so I'm going to do it in the same way as I did my mystery thriller. We're going to go through them. We're going to see kind of what we think. Look through some Goodreads lists. Look through some like book of the month stuff maybe and I'm also kind of going to go off like the authors I've got on my shelves. I've just noticed there was a massive spray bottle there. We don't have to have that in the background. I'm going to go through the authors I've got on my shelves here as well because I know that there will be repeat authors and I think they're some of the kind of like most popular ones. So yeah, without further ado, I think let's just get straight into it. We are, of course, using this same graphic as last time as I was ridiculously proud of it. But yeah, let's get straight into it. So first things first, I feel like we have to do the obvious and we have to do Miss Emily Henry and Funny Story. I think it could be this one or one other one that I'm thinking of could win like the whole thing. This has 600,000 ratings. Romance is so much more popular than mystery thriller anyway. It's actually crazy but I definitely think this could be in here. I definitely think it's going to be near the top and I definitely think this is kind of vying for the winning position really. So that is our first one on here I think obviously. She won last year I believe. I think she won maybe with book lovers as well. I'm not sure but like she did very very well. Actually maybe Colleen Hoover won that year. So Emily Henry has historically done extremely well in the Good Reese Choice Awards and I'm not surprised. I did love that book anyway. Anyway, the one I think could rival it actually is Just For The Summer by Abby Jimenez. I personally love this one as well. So this has got 500,000, but I think firstly, the overlap of the romance genres is kind of more so maybe the mystery thriller. Like with mystery thriller, I think more people will have like maybe just read Frieda McFadden or just read Lucy Foley. Whereas I think with romance, the people that are reading Abby Jimenez are reading Emily Henry, are potentially reading Elsie Silver, and then whoever's reading Elsie Silver is probably reading like Ali Hazelwood and like, do you know what I mean? It's kind of more of an overlap. So I'm not gonna say anything yet, but like I do think this could definitely be up there and is one of our potential winners. Okay, so going along my shelves, obviously next to Emily Henry, I do have Ali Hazelwood and I think she's definitely going to be on there. However, I'm not sure about Bride, whether it would be counted in the romance category because obviously it's kind of fantasy. So I don't know whether it would be romanticy. So here it says romance fantasy and romance is quite far down. And I have seen Bride on some like romance lists which makes me think it might make it on there. However, I do also want to look up Not In Love because that is like a proper romance and that, that has a lot less ratings and a lower average rating, but like I do think both could be on here, but I think Bride more likely, but I will put Not In Love maybe on the top 20. However, I do want it not be counted against me if Bride ends up not on there because it's in a different category. I will say that. I don't think that's fair to me. Okay, and then Not In Love, it's got a lot less ratings. I actually enjoyed it more than Bride. I really enjoyed this one. Everything we've gone through so far I have read and enjoyed. Um, so I am looking forward to that. But yeah, I think it could be on here. I'm gonna put it tentatively up here. It's one that we could potentially knock off later. But for now, I'm gonna put her up here. I do know authors can have like multiple books if they're in different series and these are not in the same series. So I definitely think it could be up there. I'm trying to get this to actually fit in the center. That's really annoying that it's not working, but it's fine. Okay, ugh, that's gonna piss me off, but that's fine, we'll ignore it. Then after Ali Hazelwood, we've done Abby Jimenez. I think another one that's very popular is Elsie Silver. Um, and I think her Wild Love Wild Eyes series came out this year, I believe. Um, this is published 2024 and then this is also published 2024. I do think Wild Love is slightly more popular so I think that's more likely to be on here and get the vote. See I definitely think this will be on here. I'm not putting both of them on because you can only have one in the same series and this one's kind of the most well-known one I guess. I think it came out kind of longer ago and then I also think going off my bookshelves I think Sarah Adams could be on there maybe with the rule book because that came out this year 67,000. Okay so that's definitely a little bit less but I'm going to put it on there for now. I did really enjoy this one and it's got a reasonably high rating. Um, um, I feel like she's kind of got a little bit more popular recently so I'm going to put this one in my top 20 rather than my top 10. Okay so these are the first ones off the top of my head. Looking down at my shelves I've also got 
got Carly Fortune there and Ashley Poston. I think Carly Fortune's book this year has been better received. Yeah, better received than Meet Me at the Lake. 200,000. Okay, I definitely think this could be on here. I think this also was maybe a book of the month one. So I think more popular too. So yeah, I definitely think that could be on here because I believe Meet Me at the Lake was on the list last year and that was like worse received. I heard kind of worse things. So I definitely think that will be on here. Um, and I am excited to read that one. I've only actually read Every Summer After from her, um, but I do want to read all of her stuff because I really liked Every Summer After. And then also Ashley Poston. I'm actually not sure if her previous book were nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards. I think they should have been. Yeah, this one's not been interesting. And the Seven Year Slit was, okay, it was nominated last year. This one is very, very popular. Novel Love Story's got 57,000, so that's not super high, but I do still kind of think I would put it on there. I do kind of want to see how well she did last year. I'm quite interested um, because I don't know whether she was top 10 or not. And now we can have a quick look through here as well. Lucy score as well. So just having a quick look through before we get around to it. Okay, she, where is she? Oh, here, maybe I'll put her in the top 20 this year as well. Okay, so she's going there. Then we might as well go through this while we're here. Lucy Score, I don't know if she's got a new book recently. I'm not a huge fan, but we'll see. Romantic comedy, I've not heard anything from her. Final offer, Lauren Asher could very well have a book in it. Anna Huang, I definitely think will be. I definitely think Liz Tom Ford with maybe Caught Up could be in there um, because that's been really popular this year. Then also Hannah Grace with the Maple Hill series definitely is going to be in here. I don't know about this one. We'll see. We'll open that in a new tab. Then Christina Lauren. Yes. Oh my God. I, I forgot so many people. And then these ones on the bottom shelf, I think potentially Catherine Center, but I'm not going to go for the others just because I haven't really heard anything about them. And they're pretty low on here anyway. So first things first, Lucy score. Let's have a look and see. I don't know if she's come out with anything this year actually. Okay. So we've got this one, which which is the fourth in this series. This one, yeah, this has not really got any ratings. I don't think this is gonna be on here. I don't know when Things We Left Behind came out. Actually, was it late last year? September, okay, so I don't think she'll be on here. Lauren Asher came out with, was it Love We Designed this year? Maybe, was that, no, that was 2023. November 7th, 2023. Yeah, I think that one would have been included last year. And then the next one in that series, it was like the red one, this one. It's got 53,000. Mm, we'll put it on there for now and we'll have a thing. I'm gonna put this one here. I don't know why I've not gone for the next row, but like I just feel like I'm gonna put it here. Okay, we're shaping up pretty good so far. I'm pretty confident in most of these. Anna Huang, I personally don't like her books. I definitely think her kind of King of Sins or whatever it was series will be on here. So we've got King of Sloth or The Striker. So yeah, this one's got a ton of ratings actually. So I definitely think King of Sloth will be on there. I don't really have any interest in reading any of these, but that's fine. And then I also think Caught Up. Oh wait, when, when was Caught Up published? That was October last year. So yeah, that won't count. So I'm going to put Play Along in there. This one was super popular as well. I have heard really good things about this. And 4.5 is an incredibly high rating. So I definitely think that will be in there. And I think that could be in the top 10 as well. So then we've got Daydream as well. That's got a bit less ratings, but I think it was published a little bit more recently, maybe. Um, Yeah, end of August. So I definitely think this one will be on here too. This one was super popular. The whole series has been really popular as well. So I think I'm going to put this maybe in the bottom half though, though I do think it's still going to be super popular and I think people could vote for it. Then we've got the Pucking Around series. Has this got a new one? So they have Pucking Sweet has only 16,000. This one is 44,000 but that was probably at the end of last year so I'm not going to put these ones in. The Paradise Problem I will put in. I think that was reasonably, yeah, that was really, really popular. Um, I really like this one too and um, this has like over 200,000 so I think this could be in the top maybe. I'm not sure though because I feel like maybe people that like would vote for Christina Lauren would maybe be like also voting for other ones do you know what I mean whereas I think maybe like Anna Huang probably has people that like is the absolute favorite same with like Hannah Grace so I'm not sure we'll see and then finally we've got I believe it was the rom-comers by Catherine Center that came out this year this has got 92,000 so a pretty high rating as well 4.12 I really want to read this as well I don't like her covers though like I don't like this cover I quite like the other ones but yeah that one's not my fave um, I'm going to put this in the top 20. Next up, I'm going to just do ones. I've got a couple off the top of my head that are a little bit rogue choices, but like I do just kind of think might be up here. The first one is going to be Cross the Line, which I don't think it's got a lot of ratings, but like I've heard a lot of buzz about it. So it's got 10,000, but like I've heard a lot about it and I don't know whether they would kind of put this in. It's like a little bit different, a little bit fun. I might, I, this sounds so like 
unlogical, do you know what I mean? But like I just kind of get the vibes that it could be there. So I'm going to put this in this bottom corner. If it does get nominated, I don't think it will get past the first round. But I'm just going to put it there for now. I feel like maybe they want to do something a bit different. Um, and I did, this was an afterlife book as well, so like reasonably popular. And then also, love of my afterlife, um, I've heard a lot about. So I definitely think that could be on there. Oh, 30,000 actually isn't tons, but I do think this could still be nominated. I've just heard a lot about it, so I kind of feel like it could be on there. Okay, so we've only got four spots left. Excellent. No, that's great. So I'm going to now go on to readers like hit books of the year so far, just because this gives us a little clue, I think. So we've got Just for the Summer Hit, which is good to see. Going down, fantasy, where is romance? Okay, funny story, Just for the Summer. Okay, Brides on here. That's good. Oh, Fangirl Down was on here too. Um, and this one, I've not heard too much about this, but I know her book Seven Days in June was pretty popular. So let's have a look at both of these. 26,000. I don't know. I don't think they put everything on those lists on there, so I might not include that one. 84,000. I'll probably include this one because Tessa Bailey is pretty popular. I don't personally enjoy her books, but like I do think she could be on the list. Okay, so now I'm going to look at book of the month and have a look at their nominees because I also think that they are pretty popular and kind of like a very good at kind of like being on trend and stuff like that. Guys, I'm lost again. How do I figure this out? View all months. There we go. This happened last time. Anyway, so we have this romance, but it's early release, so I don't think it will be on there. Um, no romances. This one, paranormal romance. I've not heard anything about that. Um, not heard any of these. The pairing could be on there. I think because as well, they really rarely ever have any non-heterosexual romances they might hopefully put one on there um i really liked red white and royal blue but i didn't like her other book um so i'm tentatively interested about this this has got twenty thousand, but i do think i've heard a lot about this i don't know whether it's i'm in an echo chamber but i would potentially put this into the top 20 and now my top 20 is full though which is a little bit troubling okay what else did we have as ronan one star roman i've not heard very good things about this one but i am um, potentially could put it on there yeah 12,000 and 3.69 I don't think it's going to be on there just because it hasn't really got like a ton of buzz I guess paradise problem also is already on there oh how to end a love story I think could be on there I've heard a lot about this one 70,000 okay I'm gonna put this one on there um this has got reasonably high ratings but not like overly so I might I don't really want to put it up here so I might put daydream up there instead and then put this one in here yeah I've heard a lot about this this year I think a lot of people have been reading it so I definitely think that could be definitely nominated um and then in my March. no romances here already or not i've also heard a bit about and i'm interested in reading oh stephanie archer is another one i think could be on here okay forty six thousand potentially i'm gonna look at stephanie archer because she's been pretty popular this year like the behind the net series 2023 2023 i'll have a little look so the wingman when did the fake out come out was that late last year or earlier 7th of December, okay, I think this could be on the list, and I think this could be in our top 10, definitely. It's got super high ratings. She had this one be really popular last year, um, and I don't think it made the nominees, so I think like maybe retroactively they would put her in there. So I think she could be in here. Okay, so technically we now have our top 20, but I am gonna keep looking just briefly because I think maybe they could put Ready or Not in there. It depends whether they want to kind of keep the trend of like having kind of the same authors or having kind of like different ones because I feel like if we're going across trends, I think maybe Tessa Bailey's got a bit less popular. Like I don't really think Casey McQuiston might be on there, but then again, like we do want some diversity, it would be nice. So I think maybe like instead of Tessa Bailey, they could potentially put on Ready or Not, but then also Tessa Bailey is a super buzzy author. Like people will have been reading her previous books um, this year a lot. So like she is reasonably popular. So I'm not too sure. Let's just have a quick look with the other ones so yeah no romances that month these are all kind of like seasonal so i don't think they'll be on there so i'm gonna have a quick look in the news and interviews because they often do oh this is a series that could be on here um lila sage because that was pretty popular yeah seventy six thousand. oh we're getting tricky now okay 2024 both of these so yeah swift and saddled was super popular and when was done dusted published it wasn't the end of last year was it no june last year okay so i think 
Swift and Saddled could be on there. 76,000 is quite a lot. So yeah, I think this one could be on here. And I think, I can't lie, I may have to take Cross the Line off. And I think this would be here instead, if we're being really realistic about it. I would love to have seen Cross the Line on there. It just makes more sense, I think, judging by number of ratings and like the actual popularity of the books. I wanted to look for, they do something about most popular romances recently. Yeah, so like this, but for romance. And then I can just look at the ones from this year. Okay, sorry if the angle changed, my camera battery died. So we are recharged and ready to go. But I found this list, which is the top 48 romances of the first half of the year. And I was just having a quick look through before I realized that my camera battery died. And I'm not gonna be obviously including ones that I think will be in the romance category, but I did see Leather and Lark, which I think could be on here because that's got a ton of ratings, that's crazy. Lim Painter, Happily Never After, maybe, I think potentially. And then just looking down here, I mean, maybe Elle Kennedy could be on here. I'm not sure I've seen her on the list recently. Obviously the Binding 13, Keeping 13, etc., etc., have been really popular, but I was kind of thinking this alongside Magnolia Parks. I don't know if they'd necessarily be nominated in Best Romance because they're so kind of like broad, I think, I guess. Like they're more than like just a romance, I guess. This one's not got a lot of ratings. Um, that one I think would be Romanticy. Um, yeah, that one's not got a lot. That one's kind of mid, I guess, like ones that I've just kind of not heard much about. Tara DeWitt, no, um, don't think these ones are going to be on here. Hate Mail, I've heard a bit about. Oh, Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan, that could be on there. I've heard a lot about her, that is potential. And Late Bloomer, oh, that's only got 9,000. Okay, I don't think that will be on here. Firstly, Bryn Weaver, Butcher and Blackbird, which is obviously super, super popular. And yeah, okay, I definitely think this could be on here then. This has got 132,000, so I think this could actually be nearer the top and it's got a four star okay so what do i want to sub out i actually kind of think that maybe the pairing might not be on here just because it had a few less and i am going to move i'm gonna move king of sloth down here i think that makes sense and then i will put in leather and lark here but yeah, that was a ton of ratings. I didn't know this one was so popular. I didn't love the first one in the series, so I haven't continued. Um, but I know it's pretty popular as a dark romance. So then we have Lynn Painter's books, and they're obviously very popular. I believe Best of the Movies fits into YA, so I won't include that. This one's got 49,000. I don't know if this is gonna be in here. I mean, obviously I don't know, like, I'm just going off of vibes, but like, I just don't, I didn't think it's gonna be in it. I don't know why, I just don't think so. So sorry about that. Um, L. Kennedy. What has she come out with this year? She's got the Dixon Rule, which has got 81,000. So that's quite a lot. Um, do I think it would be on there instead of one of these? Because I haven't heard a lot about it. So I'm kind of more confident in these ones. And then Annabelle Monaghan, I actually do think will be on here just because I've heard a lot of buzz about it. Though it has only got 66,000. So like realistically, I should put this one on here more. But I just think I'm gonna put this one on here instead. I don't know why, I'm just going off the vibes. It's just my intuition, which might be wrong. So what do I want to get off? Um, I do think I might get rid of Tessa Bailey. I know like this one's like less popular, but I just feel like maybe, I don't know, it's just a vibe. Maybe it's kind of like wishful thinking because I would rather like read this one and see this one do well than Tessa Bailey. But yeah, that is maybe going to be my romance list, I think. Like I'm kind of happy with that, to be honest. I think that's pretty good and reasonably confident. And then for a winner, this is a bit controversial. I am actually gonna go for Just for the Summer for Abby Jimenez. I feel like this was kind of very broadly kind of a read upon that it's Abby Hill his best work yet and I really love Funny Story and I just think it's less loved than maybe Just the Summer although Funny Story just has so many ratings I don't know I don't know I don't know I th I'm going to go for Just for the Summer but like it's between that and Funny Story and I do think I'm kind of going with a bit of a rogue option I think the safe option would be Funny Story so I do think that's likely to win but for some reason I just think Just for the Summer might win just because I feel like more people have given it five stars than have Funny Story if that makes sense like more people have read Funny Story but I don't think it was kind of as resounding of a hit as Happy Place was and I think Just the Summer I loved it and I think people have really really enjoyed that one too so yeah this is my top 20 Goodreads Choice Award predictions for romance so let me know what you guys think let me know any that you think I've missed off anything you think is going to win and yeah I'm very excited I think they should be announced next week which is very very exciting I cannot wait to get around to it and see everything that's been nominated in all the categories and do my reading vlog for the mystery thriller but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like down below hit subscribe and turn on the bell to run a little club if you made it this far leave a little love heart emoji for the romance genre if you want to watch my other videos there'll be two on the screen now to pick from as well as a blending tub in the cards from earlier and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next one Bye bye